A shadow falls on Jiribam Kuki villages under siege. The situation in Manipur is dire. A conflict, hidden from the world's eyes, is tearing the state apart. Kuki villages live in fear, trapped between violence and indifference. A systematic campaign of terror, fueled by extremist ideology. It is time to shine a light on the darkness and demand accountability. The Unholy Alliance, Manipur Police and Maite Terror. At the heart of this conflict lies a deeply disturbing truth. The alleged complicity of Manipur police with Maite extremist groups. Evidence suggests a chilling alliance, one that has emboldened these groups to operate with impunity. Groups like Arambai Tengol and UNLF, designated as terrorist organizations, are a visible, violent presence. Their actions often carried out in broad daylight, with seemingly little fear of reprisal. Manipur police have been seen standing by as Mai Tai militants attack Kuki villages. In some cases, there are even reports of police actively participating in the violence. This alleged collusion has created a climate of fear and lawlessness. The Kuki people feel betrayed and rightfully so. Distrust and fear. Kuki resistance to combing operations. Given this backdrop of alleged police complicity, it is no surprise that the Kuki community views combing operations with deep suspicion. These operations, ostensibly aimed at restoring order, are often seen as a wolf in sheep's clothing. The presence of Maitai personnel within the ranks of the Indian Army only amplifies these fears. They fear that these operations, far from ensuring their safety, could be used to target them further. This deep-seated distrust has led to several standoffs, with Kuki villagers refusing to cooperate with security forces. Women, in particular, have played a pivotal role in resisting these operations, forming human barricades to prevent the entry of security forces into their villages. Their actions are a testament to their courage and their desperation. Crushing Hope Maite police target Kuki relief efforts. The brutality of this conflict isn't limited to physical violence. It extends to a calculated cruelty, a deliberate attempt to break the spirit of the Kuki people. Truckloads of food, medicine, clothing, and essential supplies, painstakingly collected by NGOs and Kuki organizations, have been stopped at checkpoints manned by Maite police. These supplies, meant to provide a lifeline to those who have lost everything, are often confiscated on flimsy pretexts, only to be found later, destroyed or distributed among Maite communities. This deliberate targeting of relief efforts is nothing short of inhumane. It exposes the chilling reality of this conflict, that for some, it is not enough to displace and terrorize the Kuki people. Their very existence must be erased. Terror Unleashed Mai Tai militias operate with impunity. The reign of terror unleashed by Mai Tai extremist groups continues unabated. These groups, emboldened by their alleged links to elements within the state machinery, operate with shocking impunity. Their reign of terror has spread fear and chaos across the region, leaving the Kuki community living in a perpetual state of fear. They move freely, setting up checkpoints, extorting money, and intimidating anyone who dares to oppose them. Their arsenal includes sophisticated weapons, raising serious questions about their sources of funding and support. The audacity of their operations, often carried out in broad daylight, points to a sense of invincibility, a belief that they are above the law. The Kuki people are trapped, caught between the violence of these militias and the indifference of those who should be protecting them. Exposed. The links between Meite officials and terrorists. The line between the state and extremist elements has become dangerously blurred in Manipur. There is growing evidence of direct links between Meite officials holding positions of power and the very terrorist groups responsible for terrorizing the Kuki population. Photographs have surfaced showing high-ranking police officers socializing with known members of extremist organizations. There are credible reports of Maite politicians openly associating with and even funding these groups. These links raise deeply troubling questions about the nature of the state's commitment to protecting its citizens. This nexus between the state and extremist elements must be investigated and exposed. Those found guilty, regardless of their position or influence, must be held accountable. Deafening Silence The center's inexcusable inaction. 
The escalating violence in Manipur and the plight of the Kuki people have largely been met with a deafening silence from the central government. This inaction is inexcusable. The center has a moral and constitutional obligation to intervene, to restore order, and to ensure the safety and security of all its citizens. It must act decisively to disarm and dismantle the Maite extremist groups. A thorough investigation must be conducted into the alleged links between these groups and elements within the state machinery. The silence of the center is not just deafening. It is dangerous. This inaction has eroded trust in the government and fueled a perception of bias, further exacerbating the already volatile situation. Sacred Ground Defiled Burning Churches and Maite Lies The burning of Kuki churches in Manipur is not just an attack on buildings, it is a direct assault on the very identity and faith of the Kuki people. These acts of desecration are deeply symbolic, aimed at terrorizing a community and erasing their presence. Maite groups have attempted to justify these attacks by accusing Kukis of encroaching on sacred sites or engaging in forced conversions. These claims are demonstrably false, a blatant attempt to deflect blame and incite further violence. Independent investigations have found no evidence to support these accusations. The burning of churches is a hate crime, plain and simple. The perpetrators of these acts must be brought to justice, and the false narratives used to justify them must be exposed and challenged. A Calculated Plea Manipulating Faith for Mainland Support in a calculated move to garner support from mainland India, Maite groups have increasingly framed the conflict in Manipur through a religious lens. They portray themselves as defenders of Hinduism, claiming that the Kuki people, who are predominantly Christian, pose a threat to their faith and culture. This narrative conveniently ignores the historical context of the conflict, which is rooted in land rights, economic disparities, and ethnic tensions. By invoking religion, Maite groups are attempting to shift the focus away from their own acts of aggression and paint themselves as victims. It is crucial to recognize this narrative for what it is. A cynical attempt to manipulate public opinion and divert attention from the real issues at hand. See through the smoke. A call for awareness and action. The situation in Manipur is a stark reminder of the fragility of peace and the devastating consequences of unchecked hate. We cannot remain silent witnesses to the suffering of the Kuki people. We must see through the smoke and mirrors, recognize the reality of the situation, and demand accountability. It is time for the Indian government to acknowledge the gravity of the situation and take decisive action to protect its citizens. The violence must end. The perpetrators must be brought to justice. We must stand in solidarity with the Kuki people and amplify their voices. Only through awareness, action, and a commitment to justice can we hope to bring peace back to Manipur.